Hi there! Hey Martin! In a previous episode, we moved a web application from a virtual machine to Cloud Run, which is serverless, and this reduced the ops burden. Yes, we did! Moving to Cloud Run could also be more cost effective, as you only pay when the application is used. Right, uh, but the database was still stuck on a virtual machine. Should we move to a serverless database and get rid of that database virtual machine too? Yes, let's do it. The database that we are migrating drives this to-do application. Anyone can add and remove items. The to-do items are stored in a MongoDB. Right. The application code is in Node.js and used to run on a virtual machine. In our previous video, we moved that code to Cloud Run. That means that Google handles server maintenance and scaling for us. And we could shut down that virtual machine. Today, we'll make the database serverless too and shut down the remaining virtual machine. Exactly. A serverless database usually requires less maintenance work. And when the database is idle, we'll pay less. Also, if our database is on a virtual machine and that VM goes down, our entire application goes down. Uh, when I worked in a startup, our database transaction log overflowed, which took down our entire application. And it took hours to get it running again. Well, that won't happen with the serverless database. The database virtual machine is currently running MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. I think we should migrate it to Cloud Firestore which is a serverless NoSQL database in Google Cloud. All right. I know you looked into this database migration there. Uh, what are the steps? So we'll perform five steps. Export data from MongoDB, transform the data, configure Firestore, import data into Firestore, and update the application code. Got it. I can run commands from my local machine or from Cloud Shell up in the cloud. I prefer Cloud Shell because it's closer to my cloud resources. Uh, let me open it in my project. There it is. I'm ready. Uh, tell me how to do the first step. Let's do the first step, export data. I sent two commands. Uh, check if you got them. Uh, yep. Let me paste the first one in. Uh, this seems to set an environment variable. Uh, I'll copy and paste the IP address from the virtual machine uh, that runs MongoDB. Yes, that variable, mongodb underscore URI, is needed for the second command, which will do the actual export. OK. Uh, the second command you sent uses mongo export, uh, which is part of the MongoDB tools package. I installed it before in Cloud Shell uh, using the instructions on uh, Mongo's DB. I'm running the export command now. Looks like that command created a file. Opening it now. Uh, looks like this is a JSON structure. Yes, it is a MongoDB specific data structure. We'll have to tweak it a bit before we can import it into Firestore. That's the second step. Uh, uh, will we have to write a Python script or similar to do that? <laughs> no need. We will use a scripting tool called JQ, which is like said for JSON, a command line JSON processor. You can install it with that git. OK, doing so now. Done. Now, run the next command I sent you. It will do three changes to the exported JSON file. It will assign an object ID as the key and content as the data, remove the underscore ID and underscore V, and consolidate the objects in the array into a single object. Now, OK, I'm running it now. All done. Uh, it created a new file. Now, open that file. That file is in a format that Firestore understands. Now, it's time for step three, configure Firestore. So click the hamburger menu in Cloud Console. Scroll down to the databases. Click Firestore. OK, uh, should I pick native mode or data store mode here? I usually use native mode. The API for native mode is similar to MongoDB API. That means our code changes will be smaller. Got it. I'm picking native mode. And here, I'll pick a region. And then the database will be created. 
So while that is running, let's move to step four, import data into Firestore. So this step will be much easier if we use the Firestore export import npm package. So can you install that? Okay, installing it now. Uh huh. Looks like it installed successfully. Get the Firestore export import package needs a service account key to work properly. So let's create a new service account for this migration. We can delete it once we are done. Sounds reasonable. Click the hamburger menu in the Google Cloud Console. Pick IAM and then service accounts. Click new service account. Give the new account a descriptive name like Firestore Importer. Grant the new account the Firebase Admin SDK Administrator Service Agent role. And uh, click done. Now that you have created the account, let's uh, download the key for it. Click the Firestore Importer account you just created. Click Keys. Click uh, Add Key and uh, create new key, then click create, and the key will be downloaded to your machine. All right, all done. So now let's uh, move that key file from your local machine to Cloud Shell. On the top right corner, you see those three dots in the Cloud Shell. Choose Upload and choose File. Now select the key file that just got downloaded. Done. Now run the Firestore import command that I sent to you. This command will import the JSON file that we created earlier with JQ command into Firestore. Make sure you set the A option to point to the key file. That way, command will run as the Firestore importer service account that we just created before. Oh, OK, running it now, giving it a minute to finish. Looks like it's done. Very good. Now go back to the Firestore in the Cloud Console. If everything worked, our data should be there. Uh huh. I see your data here in Firestore. Yeah, the import was successful. Great. Now it's time for the fifth and the last step update the application core. All right. Uh, what do I need to do there? So, first install the Firestore client library so our code can use it. There are instructions on this web page. Okay, opening it now. Uh, we're using Node.js, so I'll click that. Uh, looks like I need to run npm install Google Cloud Firestore. Running that command now. Done. What's next? Now it's time to update the source code to use Firestore client library instead of the MongoDB library that it currently has. So open the file to do controller.js in the controllers directory. Oh, OK. I'm opening that file in the Cloud Editor now. So first, take out the MongoDB initialization code near the top of this file and replace it with the Firestore code that I sent you. Very good. Done. Then replace the bodies of the get, post, and delete methods with the other code snippets that I just sent. All right, replacing the get method, replacing the post method, and finally, the delete method. You have now updated the application code so it reads and writes to-do items from the Firestore serverless database instead of MongoDB database that was previously there on a virtual machine. Let's deploy the code and see if it works. Oh, OK. I will use the deploy command from our last video. Here goes. Looks like the deploy finished. I'll go to the Cloud Run page in the Cloud Console and click the URL to our service. There it is. It's working. Yeah, good. We uh, successfully switched from a database running on a virtual machine to a serverless database now. There will be less operations work. Our application won't have to go down if a virtual machine crashes. So we are all good.
Great. Thank you for guiding me through the five steps to do this migration. But I think you forgot about the sixth step. This will be the most satisfying step of all, I think. Hmm, what's that? I'm going to turn off the virtual machine running our old database. There! One less virtual machine to worry about. Not going to lie. That does feel good. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments for Vera or me, please add them below. We read every comment. Also, if you'd like to hear about a particular serverless topic in a future episode, please let us know below. Until next time.